Hello and welcome again to Blight Sales Business Development Series. Today we have Claire Comfort joining us for today's session on AOP and commercial service. I'd like to introduce Zach Morris. So, um, just just here to give you a sort of a um, an overview into who we are and what we do. Um, Clear Comfort, we are an advanced oxidation process uh, manufacturer, AOP. Um, I think most of you are probably familiar with that. Um, so advanced oxidation, what that is, um, it uses a um, hydroxyl radicals to uh, provide a very high, highly potent oxidation process. Um, Clear Comfort, we've been around for about seven years now. We have... Uh, NSF, ANSI 50 certifications, UL, um, we are EPA registered. Um, as far as our commercial water goes, we treat um, every type of commercial water out there, um, everything from the, the HMAC uh, market to YMCA's, rec centers, health clubs, water park splash pads, uh, universities and swim schools. Um, this is the uh, University of Arizona. Uh, they initially put us on their their big competition pool and they liked it so much that they went through and um, added, uh, um, I believe, Tom, how many systems total do they have now? 13? All of their uh, spas and other pools they've added us on to. Um, so here's some of our customers. Um, again, one of the great things about Clear Comfort uh, is that we scale very well. Um, we can treat your backyard uh, hot tub all the way up to what you see down here in the left corner uh, is a 4 million gallon wave pool in Arizona, big surf water park. Um, that, that body of water there has three of our large systems. It's 6,000 gallons per minute. And we have no problem treating that. So um, some of the challenges of other AOP systems out there is their scalability. And that's not an issue for us. Um, hydroxyls, if you're not familiar with them, they're nothing new. Um, what they, they've been, a major component of cleaning our, our atmosphere. Um, then the lower level of the troposphere, the UV light from the sun will uh, split up the ozone and oxygen in the atmosphere to create monatomic oxygen, which combines with uh, moisture in the atmosphere to create hydroxyl radicals. Um, in terms of potency of oxidizers, uh, you can see down here on the lower end, uh, chlorine and bromine, which are the more typical uh, chlorine primary sanitizers, uh, are about half of what you get with hydroxyl radicals and atomic oxygen, which are two of the species that we, we create within our systems. And how it works is we draw air through our system, uh, just ambient air, and the oxygen that's in the ambient air uh, is treated. It is hit with UV light to split it into the monatomic oxygen, and it's exposed to a magnetic array that we create inside of our system uh, to excite that molecule to keep it as O1 uh, until it is introduced into the water. So once that O1 is introduced into the water, um, and, and we, we consider ourselves a direct hydroxyl creation um, as opposed to some of the other AOP systems that are on the market today that are uh, combo systems, um, ozone with UV. Um, we, we consider ourselves direct cr hydroxyl creation because we are, we are a lot more simple system. We don't have the complexities of, of both UV and ozone. We're, we're one, um, one system package. Uh, as I said, we treat the air splits that O2 into the two O1 molecules. As soon as it comes in contact with the water, those oxygen molecules will grab a, a hydrogen to create the hydroxyl radicals easier, which are only slightly less radical than the atomic oxygen. So um, the reaction with hydroxyl radicals is um, virtually instantaneous. It takes, takes place within a few feet of, of the plumbing. That's why we uh, inject into the main return lines, um, and there's no need for destruct tanks, contact tanks like you have with those zone systems. Um, so here's an example of, um, you know, just kind of what we do. 
you have your contaminants coming in the clear comfort uh, hydroxyl inject injection here and uh, the oxidation happens and you have much fewer oxidizable material coming out pretty simple um, very very simple to install we have several different methods and options to to do that we'll get into each one of those here in just a second um, but it does install right in the main return lines it is compatible with other existing pool equipment and chemicals Here's our uh, original standard installation method. We would use a uh, booster pump, a uh, side stream with the booster pump and a venturi. The booster pump would create the flow and pressure drop on the venturi to create the suction drawing the air through. Um, some of our customers still use this method. We have started to go away, with it, away from it just due to some of the challenges of uh, the venturis. You know, if you have pump rooms that are below grade, you have um, different pressures in the main return lines. So it's, it's a bit challenging sometimes to over to, uh, to size those correctly. So we've started moving more towards direct diffusion injection. Um, a couple of different ways that we do that. One, one way that we have, um, I'm sorry, this is a, this is an example of the, uh, the Venturi method. You can see here, just a standard booster pump Venturi injects back into the return line. Um, the newer methods that we have, one of them is a surge pit install. So if you have some commercial pools with the surge pit, we can actually diffuse directly into that surge pit. Um, and one of the one of the nice things about this is it, it's extremely easy to install. So you basically mount the uh, clear comfort system on the wall. Um, we we send out a uh, junction box that's pre-wired with your um, uh, your compressor. It's a it's an industrial continuous duty compressor, um, and you just ba you just plug it right into a 120 volt outlet, and we compress the the right amount of gas. We have uh, compressors that are sized appropriately for each size system that we have, um, so that's going to deliver the right amount of gas diffused directly into the surge pit. Um, what this does, this, this is a couple of benefits. Since we are injecting a gas, this allows the gas to escape before it gets back to the pool so you don't get the bubbles out of the returns. We've also had um, quite a bit of anecdotal um, feedback from customers that they have been able to increase the amount of time between their backwash cycles so that they're conserving more water because we're actually treating and oxidizing contaminants before, uh, before it ever gets to the filter. Um, the next one is an inline, what we refer to as an inline diffuser tip type of an install. Um, this, in this situation, it would go again after the heater. Um, and we install a flow switch as an interlock because most commercial pools out there um, are using sand filters. So when you put it into backwash mode, uh, there's no flow past the filter, even if the uh, circulation pump is on. So uh, interlock and out with the circulation pump circuit doesn't work. Um, so we, we're fully self-contained as far as our interlock and our power and everything. Um, so you have your flow switch and then a diffuser rod that you would in, insert directly into the main return line. Depending on the diameter of the pipe, um, we do send out uh, uh, drill, um, hole saws, and uh, pipe taps, one-inch NPT pipe taps, so that you can drill and tap the pipe directly. Um, or if you know, an installer or, or contractor chooses, they can use um, saddle clamps as well. And some people prefer that rather than uh, drilling the pipe directly. If it's um, a small enough, like two inch, then you can use reducer T's. There's some other options there, but it's extremely simple. Um, you know, as far as time that it takes to install these, typically one to two hours um, is average. And that would, that would include mounting the system on the wall, mounting the compressor, um, and then um, installing the flow switch in the diffuser rod. Any questions on install? Um, Zach, I'm curious, in this photo that you're showing, it looks like it went, the diffuser and flow switch went right into the union at the thickest part, is that recommended or can it go right into the pipe itself? Um, 
Yeah, mo most of them actually do go directly into the pipe. Um, uh, we just this was one of our earlier um, earlier installs, and and we have uh, two two diffuser rods in this one. We now have diffuser rods that are um, a little bit longer for the bigger uh, bigger pipes. So in in m most of our situations, we're only putting in the one diffuser rod. Um, and also most, most situations it goes directly in the pipe. It doesn't necessarily need to go into that, into that joint part. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is this uh, strictly for a commercial type of installation or is this residential? As um, well? at, at this time, we, we really only have it for commercial. We're looking into it for residential. There's a few other considerations as far as, um, you know, finding a durable pump, um, that, that uh, would deliver because with those systems we're, we're looking to get five to seven liters per minute um, so something that is durable that lasts long that can give us the right amount of flow at the right price point because we're finding a lot of these things but they're they're fairly high priced for a commercial or for i'm sorry for a residential um, but we're still looking into that we're exploring those right now and the air compressor what what is the need for that do you need more oxygen to make more radicals or um, so in this in this type of injection, since we don't have the venturi to create the suction, oh, okay. we need to, we actually need to deliver the gas somehow. So rather than using suction, we're just um, pushing it through. Okay. Sure. Um, so some of the reasons why people would want to use clear comfort um, smell chloramines DPPs. One of the biggest things that we do um, is break down those chloramines and those disinfection byproducts. Um, you know, so the, the trichloramines that we associate with eye burn and the, and the smell of the pool, we will break those down. So, so um, you know, it's a, it's a typical oxidation reaction. Hydroxyl rea uh, radicals um, have an unpaired electron. And how that works is it will steal that electron from the bond of those chloramines, breaking them into their individual components. Um, same thing with the disinfection byproducts. Some of the disinfection byproducts, uh, we'll get into some of the different varieties mm -hmm. out there. Um, another, another good thing is chlorine balance, um, with, with the added oxidation of our system, our customers get to enjoy, uh, cleaner pools with far less chlorine added to it. Um, it's an upgrade to UV. Uh, we do everything that UV does with the added benefit of the extra oxidation. UV will, um, uh, fight the chloramines. They also give you protection against, uh, uh, chlorine pa uh, resistant pathogens. We do the exact same thing, but we also will oxidize contaminants and uh, UV will not. UV will also uh, consume a little bit more chlorine while we will save that for the customer. Um, model aquatic health code compliance, crypto risk, clarity and balance. Clarity is another huge one that we do, you know, with all the extra oxidation, we, we've got um, many, many before and after pictures of cloudy pools before and then crystal clear pools after. So it's another big benefit of us. Um, we've been third party uh, independent lab tested to uh, uh, reduce uh, four log crypto disinfection. So 99.99% .99 crypto kill. Um, along with, you know, other already other hard to kill bugs some of the other types of disinfection byproducts that are common in pools and we've we've done case studies on these and we have drastic reductions in trihalomethanes um, and haloacetic acid some of these are known carcinogens like chloroform um, you know at, at the very least they'll cause a lot of people breathing problems and uh, you know other health health concerns so it's a big issue right now um, Here's a few of the, the case studies that we have done as far as reductions of these. Um, the blue would be before uh, addition of clear comfort, and then the, the yellow is gonna be after. So in some cases, we've had up to 90% reduction in some of these harmful disinfection byproducts. And all of these uh, third-party tests were done at the University of Colorado Advanced Oxidation Laboratory. It's one of the nation's leading uh, um, oxidation labs. Um, here's another case study that we had um, with a customer that had 
Um, well, we, we would consider probably pretty typical chlorine consumption. Um, it, it's pretty erratic based on bather loading and, you know, other conditions anywhere from five to, you know, down close to zero. Um, after the installation of our clear comfort system, we got that to a much more manageable uh, uh, bou um, bouncing. Um, here in the state, this was also a local installation. So here in the state of Colorado, uh, with uh, supplemental systems, you're allowed to go down to 0.5 parts per million of combined uh, or of uh, free chlorine. So they let us uh, kind of adjust that and tweak that for them um, and get that to a much more steady, even uh, amount. So it's just kind of displays what we did. So clear comfort benefits less than half the cost of UV. Um, and, that, and that's not just with our, um, you know, with our installation with the cost of our equipment, but then we start to add up all of the operational expenses that people are starting to save. Um, here's a, um, an actual case study that we had with one of our customers. Typical baseline chlorine uh, expenses is $8,400. Chlorine savings with clear comfort was 4,200. The additional with uh, typical UV would have been about thousand dollars additional due to the degradation of chlorine. Um, energy to operate <clears throat> our system, you know, we're, we're talking about watts of power instead of kilowatts of power. So our, our system's $300 versus 3,000 for the typical size UV for that system. Um, on this, Particular site annual maintenance was 3,000 versus 4,800. So total annual expenses, you know, $10,000 less than the UV system. Um, along with the cost of our equipment, which was half the cost, 15,000 versus 30,000. So very, very significant savings overall. Um, this is another unsolicited email that we got from JCC Metro West, one of our customers. Um, they were just thrilled with the results, so they provided this information for us. Um, just total savings that they ex that they experienced after um, after adding us. So they spent a total of ten thousand um, dollars in Q1 through Q3 of 2016 before installation. In the same uh, period, the next year with Clear Comfort, they only spent six thousand. So it was a forty one percent savings there. And this is fairly typical that we see. Our product family, um, this is our CCW 100. Um, we do also have uh, spa products, CCW 50 now. Um, the CCW 100 treats up to 90 gallons per minute. It is wall mountable. Uh, CCW 300A, which is our, our beginner of the uh, commercial line, will treat three, uh, 90 to 350 gallons a minute. And then the 300 will treat 350 to 700 gallons a minute and it's wall mountable. Um, we also do caution, you know, some of the commercial spas out there might fall below 90 gallons per minute, but due to the, um, you know, special circumstances of commercial hot tubs, the high bather loading and high temperatures, um, we always want to specify 300 days on, on commercial spas, even if it is, you know, close to that 90 gallon a minute mark. Um, and then the CCW 500 will treat up to 2,000 gallons a minute. Um, and again, if we have pools like the, the wave pool I talked about earlier that has over that 2,000 gallon a minute, we can, um, you know, put more than one system on that to, to treat, you know, as, as high a volume as we, we can. So here's a, here's a look at our system. And on the inside, you can tell that there's, uh, there's no real complex components, very little that is uh, able to break down um, very easy maintenance on the outside. You just have your indicator lights um, that should be illuminated as well as your power light. So all of these should be on if the system's on. Um, if one or both of the blue lights are not illuminated, that means that there's probably, there's a problem with the uh, cartridge. And if you just give us a call, we'll do some troubleshooting with you and, and, uh, and get it taken care of. 
ballasts. Here's the cartridge. The cartridge is where all the magic happens. That's where we create the, the magnetic field and um, have the, the UV lamp to create the, uh, the magic gas. So your annual maintenance is just going to be a replacement of that sleeve, and that is based on the uh, service life of the UV lamp, much like your standard typical UV systems. Um, anybody can do this. It doesn't require uh, uh, large amounts of downtime with your pool or expensive labor costs. Um, there's a, uh, an electrical connection for the, ba for the ballast up on the top. There are clamps that hold the cartridges in place, and then there's just the, the tubing that slips onto the barbs. You remove the old cartridges, put the new ones back in, reverse the process. Most people can do a full system in five or 10 minutes. Um, along with that, we always send uh, return labels to return the spent cartridges back to us so that we can properly dispose of the, the UV lamps and refurbish the cartridges. Very simple. We have uh, um, support tutorials that can walk you through any of these any of these things as well. So required hydroxyl flow rates. Um, this was this was before these measurements were before we had started mounting the meters to the boxes. So now the meters are on the boxes, um, so that the compressor is pushing the gas through the meter, uh, then through the system. So you can actually fine tune that with a um, a ball valve, a needle valve that's on the flow meter. Um, these are just our required rates and we can provide you with any of this information as well so that you have it on hand. So in summary, uh, again, half the cost of UV, 99.99% elimination of crypto, reduction of chlorine consumption, um, Again, this is this pretty typical numbers that we see commercially. Um, 80 and 90 percent reductions in DBPs. We're also compliant with um, all the codes out there. Tom, would you like to share any of your experiences from your past? You've worked extensively with UV, and now you're here with Clear Comfort as our technical director. Um, your two cents as far as changing your career and now being with uh, the side of AOP? Sure. I've got a background of 20 years as a UV manufacturer with Hanovia UV and ETS UV, which are two of the biggest players in the market. And I can attest to the fact that this technology is just vastly superior when it comes to improving water and air quality, as well as simplicity of installation, operational costs, performance. I, I truly think that UV is going to have a tough time in the next few years once AOP becomes the standard. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us, including the Clear Comfort team. Uh, your presentation was fantastic. And anybody watching, if there's any interest in Clear Comfort AOP or you'd like some more information, um, we do go beyond commercial. We also have systems for residential pools as well as spas. So if you'd like some more information, please reach out to your Blythe Sales rep. And you can always visit us at our website and get in touch with us through there. The website is blightsales.com.